Hoffmeyer, can you state your name and spell the last name for the record, please? My name is Katie Hoffmeyer, spelled H-O-F-F-M-E-Y-E-R. Where do you work? I work at the Wisconsin State Crime Laboratory in Wausau. How long have you been employed there? I have worked for the Crime Laboratory since September of 2011. What's your current title? My current title is a Forensic science, Scientist Supervisor. I also have duties as a Crime Scene Response Team Leader. Have you had different titles throughout your employment there? Yes, I have. Um, if you could give me a general kind of chronological order of what you have been titled there. I be began my career at the Crime Laboratory as a Controlled Substances Analyst. Um, I worked on the bench doing controlled substances analyst analysis for um, seven years. Um, I also trained to be a crime scene response team leader, so I fulfilled that role. In 2017, I was promoted to a laboratory quality manager, and then last fall, I was promoted to a supervisor role, um, still fulfilling my duties as a crime scene response team leader. Your Honor, may I approach? You may. I'm going to show you what's been marked as Exhibit 149. Can you take a look at that and let me know when you're able to identify what that is? State Exhibit 149 is my statement of qualification, similar to a CV. So a, a curriculum vitae? Yes. Talks about your training, experience, education? Yes. And is that an accurate copy of... Your statement of qualification, qualifications reasonably updated? Yes, it is. I'd move Exhibit 149 into evidence. Any objection? No, Judge, we agree. All right, Exhibit 149 will be received. Now, if you could just give me a, a general background of your education that qualifies you for your current role. I have a bachelor's of science degree in biomedical sciences with a minor in chemistry from Grand Valley State University in Allendale, Michigan. I also have a master's of science degree in forensic sciences from Boston University. Do you have any specific education and or training as it relates to crime scene processing? Yes, I do. Can you describe for the jury what that is? is can I clarify educational training or on the job training? Either way and just specify for the jury. Okay. I did take courses in my graduate studies on crime scene processing. When I was hired at the crime laboratory, I also received on-the-job training in um, crime scene response processing to fulfill my role as a team leader. So you mentioned part of, well, let me step back a second. How many crime scenes approximately do you think you've processed in your career? I have assisted with processing over 50 crime scenes. That would also include vehicles that are submitted to the laboratory for processing, as well as um, autopsies. You mentioned a crime scene response team, correct? Yes. What is that? The crime scene response team is a team of personnel at the laboratory who volunteer to um, go to crime scenes to assist law enforcement agencies as a technical assistance to help them um, assess the scene, document the scene in its entirety through photographs, note taking, and sketches, as well as locating key pieces of evidence within that scene and collecting and preserving those items of evidence. Is that typically or always at the request of law enforcement? Yes. What different types of scenes have you processed? Just if you could give a general idea. Primarily the scenes that the team will respond to and that I've responded to are in regards to death investigations or homicides. Were you deployed as part of that crime scene response team on March 23rd, 2018? Yes, I was. Where were you sent to? I responded to a scene in the town of Springbrook. And the general location, does it sound like 430th Avenue, uh, about two-tenths of a mile west of County Road E? Yes. Do you recall what time approximately you arrived there? Um, I arrived at approximately 9.30 p.m. Do you remember who requested you? Or which agency, not specific person? The Dunn County Sheriff's Office. Did you 
have anybody else as a part of your response team that day? Yes, a photographer responded with me, Brooke Laxton, as well as um, our crime scene response coordinator came to help us with the scene from the Madison Laboratory, Nick Sulke. And Brooke, for the court reporter, is that B-R-O-O-K-E? Yes, it is. Laxton's L-A-X-T-O-N? Yes. And Nick Stalke, is that S-T-A-H-L-K-E? Yes. What was Mr. Stalke's role? Uh, Mr. Stalke assisted just as an additional team member to help with the evidence collection at the scene. You were the lead that day? Yes, I was. If you could provide the jury with a general description of what the scene looked like as you first arrived. When the team arrived, we um, parked on 430th Avenue and walked down a long farm road, a dirt farm road. At the end of that farm road was a vehicle that was um, parked or appeared to be uh, stuck in mud. The back driver's side door of that vehicle was open and a male victim was hanging outside of the vehicle. When you say vehicle, would you describe it as a car? Yes. Were there any other vehicles or equipment in the area? There was a large green army trailer, which is how I described it, that was parked next to the vehicle as well. Upon your initial observations, did you note any blood? There was blood present at the scene, yes. Um, specifically outside of the vehicle? Yes as well as other locations? Correct. Your Honor, may I approach? You may. Eighty-four. Does this look like uh, an accurate depiction of the crime scene general layout that you described? Yes, it does. And when you say you walk down a gravel or a dirt road, can you point on the map where that road is? I'll hold it for you. Um, so this is 430th Avenue. This is the long farm road that I described. So um, this is the farm road and the vehicle and the green army trailer that I referred to are parked at the end. Thank you. When you arrive at a crime scene generally, what are some of the first things you're looking to identify or preserve? When you arrive to a crime scene, first you just assess the scene in its entirety. Um, typically we'll put priority on items of evidence that are located outside versus that are in a sheltered area or could be preserved. When you're specific to this scene, did you locate I'll step back. Is there a dis distinction between footprint impressions and footwear impressions? Yes, there is. And what is that distinction? Um, footwear impressions would be um, would be produced with from someone who is walking on a surface wearing shoes, and maybe the impression would be from the tread of their shoe that is visible on the ground. Um, a footprint would be more of an impression where someone wasn't wearing shoes and you see an impression in, in the ground or in, on a surface that doesn't have a tread mark with it. Is it possible for weather to impact an outdoor crime scene? Yes. Are there certain precautions that are sometimes taken? Yes, items may be um, covered, you know, with a, a tarp or a box or something by law enforcement prior to us arriving to ensure that that item of evidence doesn't get disturbed or destroyed maybe by rain or snow or wind that is outside. Are you aware of um, whether or not any precautions were taken in this case? Yes. What were those precautions, if you recall? Um, the Dunn County Sheriff's Office did cover some impressions that they saw in mud with cardboard boxes just to preserve those items. Now, let's start with, you, you talked about footprint versus footwear. Let's start with footprint impressions. Were those, were any footprint impressions located on this crime scene? Yes. Um, 
Do you recall just generally where those footprint impressions were located? So footprint impressions were located um, traveling from the vehicle towards 430th Avenue. Um, there was a trail that was visible along that long farm road. Um, I chose to to um, mark kind of that trail with some flags, but then um, collected or marked off two of those impressions as items of evidence. Your Honor, if I may approach, you may. Can I show you what is marked as Exhibit 556? Could you please take a look at that and let me know when you've had a chance to review it? What is that document, if you recognize it? State Exhibit 556 is a receipt of physical evidence that I generated at the scene, um, which lists the items of evidence that were collected. There was a total of 15 items. So do those, it contains some numbers, correct? Yes. Do those correspond with evidence markers? Yes, they do. And is that your record of items that were found and how they correlate to evidence markers? Yes. Is that an accurate depiction of, or an accurate copy listing of the items that were found and marked in this case? Yes. I move 556 into evidence. Any objection to 556? No. Okay. Exhibit 556 will be received. And you mentioned that there were two footprint castings taken, correct? Yes. Can you describe the process for that? So casting or a casting material is used to create a 3D model of an impression that is visible in, in, in this case, mud. Um, so to cast an impression, a powdered mixture known as dental stone is mixed with water to the consistency of like a pancake batter. That casting material is slowly poured into the impression and allowed to dry, which takes anywhere from maybe 10 minutes to over an hour, just depending on the conditions outside. Um, once that's dry, then that cast, that cast can be picked up and collected, which gives you a 3D model of that impression. And to be clear, that was a footprint rather than a footwear impression, correct? Yes, that's correct. Um, if you could look at what's 284 again, and identify for the jury where, if you're able to identify where those first two footprint impressions were located. Items one and two were marked as the impressions that were collected or casted. Um, there was a trail of these foot impressions all the way to the road, but I chose to select these because they looked like good quality and then collected those two items. Were you able to identify, I think you mentioned this already, but the direction uh, that those were located, that those were going? The foot impressions were traveling towards 430th Avenue. Were you able to tell if they were bare feet completely or if there was some clothing on them? In my opinion, it appeared that there was, um, there was, they were impressions created from a sock because you could see actual fabric um, impressions in the mud. <clears throat> now, does your, you're a manager or supervisor at the crime lab, correct? Yes. Does your crime lab or any other crime lab with the state of Wisconsin labs do footprint impression comparisons? No, we do not. Now, I want to talk about the, you mentioned the car, the vehicle that the body was located in, correct? Yes. Um, can you give a general description of that vehicle? The vehicle was a silver-colored Chevy Impala. Now, do you recall anything about the clothing that the individual inside of the vehicle, the body, was wearing? Yes. Could you describe generally that clothing? The victim was wearing khaki colored pants, a gray sweater, a scarf, and socks, no shoes. Were there any visible wounds during your initial observations? 
Yes. Where were those wounds? Wounds were visible on his neck as well as on his back. When you arrived, did you touch, move, alter, tamper the body at all? No. Was the body eventually removed from the scene? Yes, it was. How was that process coordinated um, if, you, if you were involved? Right, the Dunn County Medical Examiner's Office personnel from that office um, responded to the scene to help recover the body from the vehicle. I was there to assist with that process as well. Was that after you did your scene processing? Um, we, w we marked off the items of evidence that were outside of the vehicle and near that rear driver's side door prior to moving the body just to ensure that they didn't get disturbed. And we talked about footprint impressions. Were there any footwear impressions that you noted? Yes. Where were those? Footwear impressions were observed outside of the um, rear driver's side door of the vehicle. What was done with those footwear impressions? One of the impressions was marked off and scaled and then photographed. Is it possible once you're on the scene after it's been secured, is it possible for you to say exactly when those impressions were made or by whom they were made? Maybe that's two separate questions. <laughs> when they were made? No. Okay. Is it possible if there are footprints in the same area to tell exactly what the order of those was? I'm, I'm not sure. I, I'm not capable of doing that. Now, in the area from 430th up the road, the, the side road, the muddy dirt road to the vehicle, the car that the body was in, did you notice any obvious hand prints or body prints besides the footprints that you identified? I'm not sure I understand your question. In that muddy, muddy area between the roadway and the, the car, mm -hmm. you identified some footprints that we already talked about, correct? Mm -hmm. Is that a yes? Yes. And were there any, did you see any obvious hand impressions or um, face imprints or anything like that in the mud between the car and the roadway? No, I did not. All right, if I may approach again. You may. Now, if I could have you look at Exhibit 556, and I'm going to have you compare that with Exhibit 285. Yeah, apologies, what's fine? It's the handwritten log of 15 items. I got you. Thank you. Thank you. Did those items correspond with items? located on this diagram? Yes. And exhibits or evidence markers one and two would have been on the roadway to the top portion of this diagram, correct? Yes. So what we have here is evidence markers three through 15. Is that accurate? Yes. And I'm going to, actually I will use the tripod now. Ms. Hoffmeyer, if I could have you come on this side of the, the witness box. And I'd like to have you maybe go on the other side so the jury can see what you're pointing to. Starting with evidence marker number three. Can you point to where that's located on the diagram? 
Evidence marker number three is located right here between the vehicle and the trailer. And what is evidence marker number three? Evidence marker number three is a brown leather, leather boot, which was the left boot. And perhaps I can just explain my intention is to have you walk through four through 15. So without having to interject each time, if you could walk through starting with now exhibit or evidence marker four, state the location and then the item. Evidence marker number four is another brown leather boot, which was located right near the rear um, driver's side door, and that was the right boot. Evidence number five, evidence marker number five, um, <coughs> was a footwear impression in the mud, which was right outside of that rear driver's side door. Evidence marker number six was a blue fleece blanket with reddish brown stains that was outside of the vehicle. Also collected with that blanket within the blanket was what I marked as item 6A, which was a cardigan that was found with the blanket at that location. Evidence marker number seven was a dark brown and green paint chip located on the ground. Evidence marker number eight was a blue string that was also found on the ground. Evidence marker number nine was a reddish brown stain that was located on the grass between the vehicle and the trailer. Evidence markers number 10 located between the vehicle and the trailer as well as number 11 which is positioned closer to the trailer were both cigarette butts. Evidence marker number 12 was a reddish brown stain located on the grass near the trailer. Evidence marker number 13 was a reddish brown stain that was located on the side of the trailer, as well as evidence marker number 14 was another reddish brown stain located on the outside of the trailer. And then evidence marker number 15 was a reddish brown stain that was located in the grass between the front of the vehicle and the trailer. Thank you. If I could have you take a seat back on the witness stand. <coughs> you described a couple of items as, as stains. Is there anything that's done to follow up on those those items. Wow. Maybe, maybe I'll start back with another question. What did you believe those to be? The reddish brown stains, um, I believe that those appear consistent with blood. Is that based on your training experience processing of crime scenes? Yes. When you identify areas that you believe to be blood, is there a certain process that you follow? The items could be tested while on scene with a presumptive blood reagent to see if that reaction turns positive, or the team leader could just choose to collect the stain for further testing at the laboratory. What was done in this case? In this instance, while on scene, I chose to just collect those items that I believed were consistent with blood, and I did not do any presumptive testing, um, mostly due to the frigid cold that at the nighttime while we were on scene. Did you mark all areas that you thought contained possible blood? Yes, I marked the either individual stains or an area that had stains and then collected those items. 
So when you say collected an item, some of the stains were on, for example, the trailer. How would you collect that item? So the two stains that were visible on the edge of the tra trailer um, were collected by taking a cotton swab, um, moistening that swab with water, and then rubbing the swab across that surface until the swab becomes discolored. Um, then that swab can then be packaged and sealed and then submitted to the laboratory for testing if needed. What about stains? For example, marker number 12 is a reddish brown uh, on grass at marker 12. How would you collect that? This stain that was at marker number 12 was on gr the grass. I chose to just take a portion of the grass with the blood on it and submit it to the lab for testing. Does that process alter the DNA in any way? To my knowledge, it wouldn't, but that would be a better question for a DNA analyst. Is that a process that you're trained in? Yes, trained to either physically collect the item or swab the item. Now, are there certain precautions that you're also trained in to help prevent contamination or tampering? Yes. What are some of those different steps that are taken? Steps are taken to ensure that um, we don't contaminate a scene by wearing gloves um, or protective equipment um, just to ensure that the evidence doesn't become contaminated unintentionally. Um, so gloves were worn while collecting these items and using clean sterile swabs and packaging to put those items in. So once you take a swab, what is the packaging that it goes in? The swab would go inside of a swab box and then inside of an envelope and then that envelope is sealed. What about, for example, with the grass that you collected, what does that packaging look like? The grass with the stains would have put, been put in a, either a paper bag or an envelope um, and then sealed. So items from markers one through 15, did those items eventually get turned over to the Dunn County Sheriff's Office? Yes. Do you recall the officer that was took custody of those? All items that were collected from the scene were handed over to Rich Day of the Dunn County Sheriff's Office prior to us departing. Now, I just want to be clear as to which items from that list of marker numbers um, suspected blood was, either samples were taken or suspected blood was contained on them. Could you go through those? Can you repeat the question? I just want to have you note which of the 15 items listed as, as markers 1 through 15 had either suspected blood on them that a sample was taken or uh, the item itself was taken for possible analysis later. Okay. Uh, markers number 3 and 4 were the brown leather boots. I can't recall if there was apparent blood on the boots or not, but they were physically collected. Um, the dark blue fleece blanket at marker six had reddish brown stains that were visible. The cardigan was also collected at marker 6A. I can't recall if that had stains or not. And then a reddish brown stain at marker nine was collected as well as the stains at markers 12, 13, 14, and 15. <clears throat> I think you said you arrived at about 9.30 p.m. on the 23rd. Do you recall what time approximately you completed processing that scene? At approximately 6 a.m. the following morning. Your Honor, if I may approach, I have a, a number of photos which have already been provided to defense. They're pre-marked. Um, you may approach. The photos provided contains exhibit numbers 67 through 70, exhibits 72 through 88,
as well as exhibits 89 through 144, exhibits 432 and 433. Exhibit 432 and 433. And finally, Exhibit 519. <coughs> Ms. Hoffmeyer, have you, have you had a chance to look through the photographs contained in that file? Yes. And are those all accurate photographs of the crime scene as you observed it on the, time, the date of the processing? Yes. I'd move each of those exhibit numbers into evidence and we'll go through each of them. Uh, I'd ask the court allow me to publish to the jury through projection on the screen. All right. Any objection? No, Judge. All right. So exhibits 67 through 70, so and 72 through 88. 89 through 144. Excuse me, Judge, I'm sorry. 72 through 78. Through 78? 88, Judge. I thought it was 88, so oh. I right, know. So it's just 72 through 144, then? Correct. Okay. They're broken up into two categories, so that's why. Okay. So, again, uh, 72 through 88, 89 through 144, 432, 433, and 519 will be received. If I may approach again. You may. And again, you may also publish to the jury. I'm going to show you what's marked as exhibits. 66 and exhibit 560. First, referring to exhibit 66, what is that document? State exhibit number 66 is a photo log that was prepared by Brooks, Brooke Laxton, um, who took all the photos at the scene. And is that a fair and accurate copy of the photos that are in that folder? Not all of them, but the ones that are pulled? Yes. Uh, and what about, I believe, is it, I'm sorry, what was the second exhibit number? State exhibit number 56. Excuse me, 560. And what is that? State exhibit number 560 is another photo log that was produced by Brooke Laxton for um, the photos that were produced from processing the vehicle or the Chevy Impala that was at the scene. That vehicle was processed at the crime laboratory. And is that, again, an accurate list of all of the photographs that were taken, some of which are contained in the folder in front of you? Yes. I'd move those two exhibits into evidence. Any objection? Agreed. All right, exhibit 66 and exhibit 560 will be received. So I'm going to start with exhibit number 67. So Madam Clerk, if I could have the screen, please. These will correspond with what's contained in the, in the file. So if you need to review those, you can as well. Can you tell the, the jury what is depicted in exhibit number 67? State, number, or state exhibit number 67 is a photograph of the foot impressions in mud along the farm road that were marked as items one and two. I'm going to provide you with a laser pointer so you can point out specific areas of interest if you need to. Um, Exhibit number 68. Can you describe what's depicted there, please? State exhibit number 68 is a close-up photograph of the foot impression at marker number one 
which includes a scale and the directionality that impression was traveling. Exhibit 69, can you tell the jury what's depicted here? State exhibit number 69 is a photograph of the Chevy Impala, the Chevy Impala, as well as the green army trailer at the scene. Exhibit 70, can you tell the jury what's depicted there? State exhibit number 70 is also a photo of the Chevy Impala with the rear driver's side door open and the victim in the back seat area. Are there items of interest that were eventually marked off with markers uh, located between the green trailer and the vehicle? Yes, um, evidence markers three through 15 were all contained within this area outside of the vehicle, between the vehicle and the trailer. And have you look at exhibit number 72. Can you describe for the jury what's contained here? State exhibit number 72 is a photograph of items that were marked off for collection. Um, items three through 12 are in this photograph. Exhibit number 73, what's depicted here? Exhibit number 73 is one of the brown leather boots that was collected. And exhibit number 74? Exhibit number 74 is the brown leather boot that was collected at marker number four. Exhibit number 75, what's depicted there? State exhibit number 75 <laughs> is a photograph of the foot impre footwear impression that was just outside of the rear driver's door. Um, more photographs of this impression were taken with a scale. And exhibit 76. Exhibit number 76 is um, the dark blue fleece at marker number six, as well as the brown cardigan that was found wrapped up with that blanket. And the cardigan would have been designated as a separate, a subsection of six, correct? Yes, I marked it as item 6A. What's depicted in exhibit 77? State exhibit number 77 is a photograph of a reddish brown stain that was on the grass at marker number nine. And that's one of the samples that would have been collected? Yes. Exhibit number 78, what is there? State exhibit number 78 is a cigarette butt that was collected from the ground at marker number 10. Why don't we just hold on for a moment until they get that on? Thank you. Exhibit number 79. State exhibit number 79 is a photograph of the cigarette butt that was collected from the grass at marker number 11. Exhibit 80. State exhibit number 80 is a photograph of the reddish brown stain that was collected from marker number 12. <coughs> Exhibit 81. State Exhibit number 81 shows an overall photograph of the stain at marker 11 and 12, 
as well as the reddish brown stains that were visible on the edge of the green trailer are markers 13 and 14. Exhibit 82. State exhibit number 82 is a reddish brown stain that was located on the edge of the green trailer at marker 13. If you could describe exhibit 83, please. State exhibit number 83 is a photograph of, an overall photograph of the stain at marker 14 and the stain at marker 12. Exhibit 84. State exhibit number 84 is a photograph of the male victim in the back of the Chevy Impala. Exhibit 85. State exhibit number 85 is a photograph of the victim's legs in the position that he was found in the back of the vehicle. And exhibit 86. State exhibit number 86 is also a photograph of the victim's legs and his position that he was found in the back of the Chevy Impala. I just have two more, then we'll take a short detour. Exhibit 87. State exhibit number 87 is a photograph of the back of the Chevy Impala once the body had been removed. And exhibit 88. State exhibit number 88 shows a reddish brown stain on the grass at marker number 15. And you said, uh, Madam Clerk, we could take the screen down, please. Thank you. You said that the items 1 through 15 were all gathered and then turned over to the Sheriff's Department eventually, correct? Yes. Your Honor, if I may approach? You may. Um, I'm going to have you open some of the physical items of evidence, so if you need to do anything to prepare, there are some gloves here and a paper-covered table. Five, six, seven, nine, and ten.
Let's hop I'll have you start with what's marked as exhibit number 205. Is there any writing on there that indicates to you what that this is associated with this case? The item is marked with the laboratory case number, W18603, and has been designated as item number D when it was submitted to the lab. Now, I'll have you open what's marked as exhibit number 205. There's a pair of scissors, and I believe you're wearing gloves already. If you could open exhibit 205, please. This is the um, brown leather boot that was collected from the scene. From marker number three? Yes. If you could open up exhibit 206, please. And Judge, I, I, I'll ask to publish this to the jury just by having Ms. Hoffmeyer hold it up in front of the jury box. Um, I'd move each of these 2056. Seven, nine, and ten into evidence. I don't think there's an objection. Any objection? No, Judge. All right. Any objection to the matter of publishing them to the judge? Uh, not in the way described. Okay. So, uh, exhibits uh, 205, 206, 207, 208. No 208, Judge. Just 209 and 210. Okay. Those will be received. Exhibit number 206 is the right leather boot that was found at marker number four at the scene. If I could just have you hold that up for the jury. Thank you. And once you've somewhat repackaged that, if we could move on to exhibit 207. Do you recognize what 207 is? Yes. What is that? State exhibit number 207 is the brown cardigan that was found at marker 6A that was out on the ground outside of the vehicles. If you can tell just from a cursory view of that item, are there any rips, tears, or puncture wounds? that you can easily see.
I don't I don't see anything here. Thank you. And once you've had an opportunity to repackage that to the best you can, we'll move on to exhibits 209 and 210. Inside of that envelope was another sealed envelope, which has my my handwriting, the case number, and the marker number 10, which contained a cigarette butt. Thank you. And we'll move on to exhibit 210, please. sealed envelope inside which has my handwriting and initials with marker number 11 which was a cigarette butt collected from the scene. Thank you. Um, I'll have you take kind of finish up repackaging these and I'll have you take a seat at the witness stand. So you processed the crime scene. Did you also have an opportunity to process the vehicle once it was transported to the crime lab in Wausau? Yes, I did. When did that occur? The vehicle was submitted to the laboratory for processing on March 26th of 2018 and then was processed at the laboratory in the following days. How did the vehicle get there? The vehicle was transported to the laboratory in an enclosed trailer by the Dunn County Sheriff's Office. When it was received, and we, when we say vehicle, we're talking about the car that was on scene, correct? Yes, the Chevy Impala. And when it was received at the crime lab, how was it taken in? Was it in a secured location? Where was it put? Right, the vehicle was transferred from the enclosed trailer into the garage of the laboratory which is a secure building. Who processed the vehicle? The vehicle was processed by myself with the assistance of Brooke Blackston, who performed the photography. Did Carissa Wobler, and it's C-O-R-R, I'm sorry, is it C-O-R-I-S-S-A? -S <coughs> yes. Wobler is W-O-B-L-E-R. Did she assist as well? Carissa Wobbler um, did some latent print processing on the rear driver's side door of the vehicle. You were able to identify this, this car based on appearance 
license plate, VIN number, those things as being the same vehicle that was in the, on the dirt roadway, correct? Yes. Um, when you first started processing the vehicle, where did you start? I first examined the exterior of the vehicle to look for any evidence that may be on the exterior and then move to the interior of the vehicle. What were you looking for on the outside of the exterior of the vehicle? I was looking for any probative items of evidence and in this case there was blood on the exterior of the vehicle. What did you do with those areas of suspected blood? Areas of suspected blood were um, photographed, marked with an evidence number, and then swabbed for collection. Was that following the same process you described with the crime scene <coughs> processing? Yes. You know if I may approach? You may. I'm going to show you what's marked as five, Exhibit 557. Do you recognize what that document is? Yes. What is that document? State Exhibit number 557 is a receipt of physical evidence that I generated at the crime laboratory with the items of evidence that I collected from the vehicle. So did you put this document together? Yes, I entered each item that was collected into our laboratory information management system, and then the system will generate this document. I'd move Exhibit 557 into evidence. Any objection to 557? No, Judge. All right, Exhibit 557 will be received. When you said that you collected samples from the exterior of the vehicle, are there specific, a specific number of samples that were collected? I marked off three items of evidence that was collected, and then Carissa Wobbler also examined the exterior of the vehicle for any areas of friction ridge detail. She had areas that she marked off on that vehicle. The three that you marked off, what were those? So if we look at exhibit 557, there's an item number that you assigned to different items of interest during the processing, correct? Yes. And is the item number different than what a marker number might be? The marker number is what will appear in the photographs with the item of evidence then the item number is what is used to keep track of items of evidence that are within the laboratory, so that will have a different corresponding number. Was, and that would actually be a letter plus a number, correct? Yes. And was the vehicle given a, a letter itself? Yes. And that was what? The vehicle, or the Chevy Impala, was submitted to the laboratory as item B. So items that were marked and identified during the processing of that vehicle, would they be, would they be the letter B and then a number? Yes. Okay. What were the item number, letter and number for uh, the three items that you located, the, the three that you sampled? The three items that were located on the exterior of the vehicle were designated as items B1, B2, and B3. Where was B1 located? B1 was located on the exterior rear driver's side door and it was a reddish brown stain. Where was B2 located? Item B2 was a reddish brown stain that was located on the exterior rear driver's side door at marker two. And B3? Item B3 was located on the trunk at marker number three, which was also a reddish brown stain. Is that pretty much the extent of the outside processing in terms of marking uh, 
items of interest? That was the extent of the processing that I processing that I performed. Yes. And then, if we move on to the interior, did you note something as what became item B four? Yes. What was that, and where was it located? Item B four was a black and gray coat with reddish brown stains, which was located on the floor of the rear driver's side, the floor of the rear driver's side of the vehicle at marker number four. What about item B5? Item number B5 was described as hairs or fibers that were located on the back of the black and gray coat at marker four. Um, the hairs were then marked as 4A. What about B6? Item B6 was a sock with apparent blood collected from marker number 4B. And B7? Item number B7 was a cigarette box that had two cigarettes inside which was collected from the front right pocket of the black and gray coat and was marked as mar at marker number 4C. What about items B8 and B9? B8 and B9 are um, described as a black, black and white Nike shoes, so it's the pair at markers 5 and 6. Did you note anything about the condition of the shoes, whether they were old, new, clean, dirty? The shoes were um, muddy and slightly damp. Muddy? Yes. And I'm sorry if you mentioned this, were there any um, <coughs> stains visible on the shoes, either of them? I did notice a stain on the sole of the um, shoe at marker number five. And that would be B8, correct? Yes. And that was the left shoe, and B9 was the right shoe, correct? Yes. Um, can you describe B10 and where it was located, please? B10 was located on the, or at the rear driver's side floor at marker number seven. It was described as a wad of dark brown hair. Now, items... B11 through B20 are all described as reddish brown stains, correct? Yes. Can you go through and identify where each of those was located? Yes. Um, if we could start with B11. B11 was a reddish brown stain located at the, on the interior rear driver's side door at marker number eight. And B12? B12 was a reddish brown stain from the interior rear driver's side door at marker nine. B13? B13 was a reddish brown stain located from on the interior rear driver's side door frame at marker number 10. B14? B14 was a reddish brown stain collected from the interior rear driver's side door frame at marker number 11. B15? B15 was a reddish brown stain collected from the back of the front driver's seat at marker number 12. B16? B16 was a reddish brown stain collected from the back of the front driver's seat at marker number 13. B17? B17 is a reddish brown stain collected from the edge of the seat bottom on the rear driver's side at marker 16. B18? B18 is a reddish brown stain collected from the upper, upper interior right driver's side door frame at marker 16. B19? B19 was a reddish brown stain which appeared to be mixed with some mud or dirt that was collected from the upper interior rear driver's side door frame at marker 17. B20? B20 
was a reddish brown stain collected from the back of the front driver's seat at marker number eight. <coughs> and I didn't ask about B23, but was that a same reddish brown stain? I'm sorry, is that the same as what item? Uh, B23, I'm sorry, not, not comparison, but is not comparing them, but is that the same type of reddish brown stain? B23? Yes. Where was that located? B23 was located on the interior um, taped opening of the rear driver's side window at marker 24. Now, to step back to B21 and B22, what were those items and where were they located? B21 was a reddish brown stain collected from the passenger side rear seat bottom at marker 21. And B22? And B22 was a reddish brown stain collected from the interior rear passenger side door at marker 22. What was B24? B24 was a canvas painting with reddish brown stains on the edges, which was collected from the front passenger seat. B25. B25 was a reddish brown stain from the center of the steering wheel at marker 31. B26, I'm sorry, B27. B27 was a reddish brown stain collected from the upper portion of the front driver's seat at marker 33. And what was B26? B26 was a gray LG cell phone from the center council at marker 32. Now, up to this point, we've talked about a lot of reddish brown stains. Is there a, you said a presumptive test is sometimes used to help determine if it's possibly blood, correct? Yes. What is that test called? The presumptive test that was used at the laboratory for, to indicate the presence of blood is known as phenolphthalein. And can you, I'm sorry to put you on the spot, but I assume you can handle it. Can you spell that for the court reporter? Phenolphthalein is spelled P-H-E-N-O-L. P-H-T-H-A-L-E-I-N. Was that presumptive test used in this case? Yes, it was. Um, for the items that we talked about up to this point? Yes. Um, the suspected blood, correct? That is correct. Um, and were all of those items presumptively positive at this point? Yes. Um, were there other brownish stains that were located that were also tested but were negative for phenolphthalein? Yes. Where were those generally, um, where were those stains located? Those stains were located primarily in the front seat of, or front seat area or front compartment of the vehicle. Now, I want to ask you just about a couple more exhibit or uh, item numbers, B28, where was that item located and what was it? B28 was a black serrated folding knife, which was collected from the right front right pocket of a brown jacket that was located inside of the trunk at marker number 36. And item B29, what was that and where was it located? Item B29 was a black handled serrated knife, which was collected from a bag located in the trunk at marker number 37. Now, there were photographs which we've already introduced as exhibits that also correspond to the processing of the, the car at the crime lab, correct? Yes. Madam Clerk, if I could have the screen, please. I'm going to have you look at exhibit. We'll do the same process. We'll go through and just have you explain what generally is depicted in each of the photographs. Here's exhibit number 89. 
State Exhibit number 89 is the front side of the Chevy Impala that was submitted to the laboratory for processing as item B. Exhibit 90. State Exhibit number 90 is the driver's side of the Chevy Impala. And in Exhibit 90, there appears to be some discoloration on the above the front left wheel and the driver on the driver's side uh, driver door. Do you know what those discolorations or photographs are? I'm sorry. Can uh, you please repeat that? Do you know what the discolorations are? Are those mud or are those drawings or what is that? This this area? Correct. Um, that appeared to be some like custom artwork on the vehicle. Okay. And I'll have you look at Exhibit 91. What's depicted there? State Exhibit number 91 is a photograph of the rear or the back of the Chevy Impala. Exhibit 92. State Exhibit number 92 is a photograph, photograph of the passen, passenger side of the vehicle. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit and we're gonna look at on the both the front passenger side door as well as the back passenger side door. There's some green on each panel. Do you know what those are? The Green area again appears to be some custom painting that was on the vehicle. Thank you. Exhibit 93. State exhibit number 93 is a photograph of the driver's side rear door. Exhibit 94. State exhibit number 94 is a photograph of a reddish brown stain at marker one that's present on the rear driver's side door of the vehicle. Exhibit 95. Exhibit number 95 is a close-up photograph of the reddish brown stain that was present at marker number one. Exhibit 96. State exhibit number 96 is a photograph of the rear driver side of the vehicle with marker number two, which is an area with a reddish brown stain. I'm going to zoom in a little bit on the number two marker. If you could use the pointer, if you still have it, to identify what specifically you're marking with exhibit or with marker two. Marker two is just focusing on this area here that appears to be um, stained. If you look at exhibit 97, what are we looking at there? State exhibit number 97 is a photograph of a reddish brown stain at marker three that was present on the trunk. And I'll zoom in again, and if you could just circle with the pointer what we're looking for. This, this area right here. Exhibit 98. <clears throat> State exhibit number 98 is a photograph of the floor area at the rear, rear driver's side of the vehicle. Um, the image is a little bit dark, but the gray and black coat is at marker four, as well as a black and white Nike shoe at marker number five.
exhibit number 99. State exhibit number 99 is a wad of dark brown hair that was located on the back of the black and gray coat at marker 4A. Exhibit 100. State Exhibit 100 is a photograph of the black and white Nike shoe that was found at marker number five that shows um, the mud and apparent area of a reddish brown stain. Exhibit 101. State Exhibit 101 is just a photograph of the sole or the, the tread of the shoe at marker number five. Exhibit 102. State exhibit number 102 is the right black and white Nike shoe that was found at marker six. Exhibit 103. State exhibit number 103 is a photograph of the bottom sh shoe or the tread of the shoe. Exhibit 104. State exhibit number 104 is a, is a wad of brown hair that was located at marker seven at the rear driver's side floor of the vehicle. Exhibit 105. State exhibit number 105 is an overall photograph of the some of the reddish brown stains that were marked at the rear driver's side of the vehicle. I'll zoom in on, we'll start with Marker number eight, can you circle the area of interest in that? I'm sorry, I'll... Can you circle the area of interest depicted in the photograph? Marker, the stain at marker number eight is this, this area of reddish brown staining. And marker number nine? Marker number nine is focusing on this, the stain located here. We'll stay on this photo just momentarily. Um, markers number 12 and 13. Marker number 12 is looking at this reddish brown stain on the back of the driver's seat. And marker number 13 is another reddish brown stain on the back of the driver's seat. Do you know the marker number shown in the photograph here? Is that too blurry to tell? It's, it's a little blurry for me to tell. I'm sorry. Exhibit 106, what are we looking at here? State exhibit number 106 is a photograph of the rear compartment of the vehicle with some of the stains that were marked off. And specifically marker, I believe it's 15, is that identified on there? Yes, marker number 15 is located right here on the edge of the seat bottom. Just briefly on exhibit 107. State exhibit 107 is a closer photograph of stains at marker eight and a stain at marker nine. Exhibit 108, that's again, the stain at marker number nine, correct? Yes. 
exhibit number 109. State exhibit number 109 is a photograph of stains that were marked at number 11, 10, and 17, which are present on the rear driver's side of the vehicle. Exhibit 110. State exhibit number 110 is a close-up photograph of the reddish brown stain at marker 10. And if you can remind us where that's located. This is located at the bottom of the rear driver's side door area. Exhibit 111. State exhibit number 111 is a photograph of the reddish brown stain present at marker number 11. And it's just focusing on all of this staining right here. Exhibit 112. <clears throat> State exhibit number 112 is a photograph of the stains marked at number 12, 13, and 18, and then a um, tear in the fabric. I'll just zoom in a little bit on marker 18 and the tear. Can you just identify those again with the pointer? Number, the stain at marker 18, and then the, the tear in the fabric at marker 14. Exhibit 113. State exhibit number 113 is a photograph of this area of staining at marker number 15 which was present on the seat bottom at the rear driver's side compartment. Exhibit 114. State exhibit number 114 is a photograph of a reddish brown stain at marker number 16, as well as um, an area with reddish brown staining appeared to be mixed with mud at marker 17 at the rear driver's side compartment of the vehicle. Exhibit 115. State exhibit number 115 is a close-up photograph of the reddish brown stain present at marker 16, which was in the rear driver's side compartment of the vehicle. Exhibit 116. State exhibit number 116 is the reddish brown stained area, which appeared to be mixed with blood at marker 17, or excuse me, mixed with mud at marker 17. Exhibit 117. State exhibit number 117 is the area with a reddish brown stain at marker 18 that was present on the back of the driver's seat. Exhibit 118. State exhibit number 118 is a photograph of the rear driver's compartment with, excuse me, rear compartment of the vehicle with stains at markers 21, 22, as well as a, a tear in the seat at marker 20. Exhibit 119. State exhibit number 119 is a photograph of a reddish brown stain that was present at marker 21. Exhibit 120. State exhibit number 120 is a photograph 
of the reddish brown stain present on the rear passenger side door of the vehicle at marker 22. Exhibit 121. State Exhibit 121 is another close-up photograph of the reddish brown stain present at marker 22. Exhibit 122. State Exhibit number 122 shows a photograph of the rear compartment facing the driver's side of the vehicle with stains at markers 8 and 24. Exhibit 123. State exhibit number 123 is a photograph of the reddish brown stain at marker number 24. Exhibit 124. State exhibit number 124 is an overall photograph of the front driver's side seat of the vehicle. Exhibit 125. State exhibit number 125 is a photograph of a canvas painting that was in the front passenger seat of the vehicle that had reddish brown stains at marker 25. Exhibit 126. State exhibit number 126 is a close up photograph of the reddish brown staining that was present on that painting at marker 25. Exhibit 127. State exhibit number 127 is a photograph of the front side of this, of the painting that had the stain at marker 25. Exhibit 128. Exhibit 128 is a photograph of the top of the vehicle with some of the custom artwork. Exhibit 129. State exhibit number 129 is a photograph of the hood of the vehicle with custom artwork. Exhibit 130. State exhibit number 130 were areas of um, brownish staining that were marked off at areas number 26, 27, 28, and 29. Um, do you recall if those items were, or those areas were, were uh, presumptively tested for blood? They were presumptively tested. And what were the results? They all tested negative. Exhibit 131. State exhibit number 131 shows a photograph of the marker number 31 on the steering wheel with an area with a reddish brown stain. I'll go back to exhibit 131 briefly and zoom in on the steering wheel. If you could use the pointer to identify the area of interest. It's a small area right here. Uh, exhibit 132. State exhibit number 132 is a photograph of the reddish brown stain that was present on the edge of the driver's seat at marker 33. Exhibit 133.
State Exhibit number 133 is a photograph of the contents removed from the trunk of the vehicle and a folding knife that was found in the pocket of this jacket. Exhibit 134. State exhibit number 134 is a photograph of a serrated knife that was found inside of this cactus print bag that was inside of the trunk of the vehicle. Exhibit 135. State exhibit 135 is a photograph of the folding knife found in the brown jacket and was marked as number 36. Exhibit 136, if you could just describe what area this depicts. State Exhibit 136 is a photograph that was captured um, with an area that was processed by Carissa Wobbler and marked by Carissa Wobbler. Exhibit 137. State Exhibit 137 is also um, scales that were placed by Carissa Wobbler and photographed which are present on the driver's side of the vehicle. Exhibit 138. State Exhibit number 138 is an area that was marked off by Carissa Wobbler on the driver's side of the vehicle. Exhibit 139. State Exhibit 139 is a photograph of an area of interest that was scaled by Carissa Wobbler. Exhibit 140. State Exhibit number 140 is also a photograph of an area <coughs> on the driver's side of the vehicle um, that was marked by Carissa Wobbler. Exhibit 141. State Exhibit number 141 is a photograph of the driver's side, rear driver's side of the vehicle with an area of interest that was scaled by Carissa Wobbler. Exhibit 142. State Exhibit number 142 is a photograph of an area that was scaled by Carissa Wobbler. Exhibit 143. State Exhibit Number 143 is an area on the driver's side of the vehicle, rear driver's side of the vehicle, that was scale, scaled by Carissa Wobbler. Exhibit 144. State exhibit number 144 is a photograph of an area on the vehicle that was um, scaled by Carissa Wobbler. Exhibit 432. State exhibit number 432 is a photograph of the rear compartment of the, of the vehicle. Exhibit 433. State exhibit number 433 is a photograph of the contents that were removed from that rear compartment of the vehicle. And I want to look back at Exhibit 432 again. So if you look at the center of uh, the items on Exhibit 433, there's a small canvas painting. Is that correct? Yes. Do you see that item in Exhibit number 432? And if so, can you point it out with the pointer? The canvas painting is here on the floor in the rear compartment on the passenger side. Um, and I believe you have in front of you what's marked as State's Exhibit 519. Is that correct? And it, if we could, yes. we can go down with the screen, Madam Clerk. Thank you. Um, exhibit 519, is that a photograph of a letter? Yes, it is. Where was that letter located in the vehicle if it was? Um, State Exhibit 519 
is a photograph of a letter that was found in the front compartment of the vehicle. All right, one of the last things I'm gonna ask you to do is to open up a few more items of physical evidence. So if you wanna just put gloves on or prepare however you need to. Your Honor, if I may approach. You may. Madam Clerk, we'll have exhibits 236, 237, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42. Actually, we can skip Sophomore, whenever you're ready, I'll have you open up Exhibit 236. Judge, I'm going to move Exhibits 236, 237, 238, 240, 241, and 242 into evidence. 240? 240, 241, and 242, no 239. Okay. It's not 40, 41, and 42. It's 240. 241, 242? Yes. Any any objection, Mr. Nelson? No. All right, then uh, those exhibits will be received. Ms. Hoffmeyer, if you could open up exhibit 236. I'm sorry, I'll get you a scissors.
Software, do you recognize what that item is? Yes. What is that? Uh, state exhibit, I'm sorry, I don't remember. 236? 236 contains um, a black and gray coat that was collected from the rear <coughs> driver's side floor of the vehicle that was designated as item B4. Your Honor, I ask for permission to publish these items to the jury in the same fashion as the previous items. Great. Any objection? All right, go ahead. If you're comfortable, would you mind holding the jacket up so the jury can see it? And can you rotate the jacket once there's been an opportunity? Thank you. Just a quick question. There are quite a few bags on the table right now. Is that just because they were, the item was packaged, reopened, packaged, reopened a number of times? Yeah, there was numerous people opening the item. Um, this would be the original packaging that I put it in, and then it gets harder to seal the item, so an analyst may choose to put it in another layer of packaging. Can I have you begin to, to repackage that item? My apologies. Putting the bag on one side, it can be repackaged at a break. Thank you. Yep. And, and I think the scissors is right below. So once you're comfortable and ready, I'd have you open up exhibit 237 if you could. Exhibit 237 is? State exhibit number 237 is the left <coughs> black and white Nike shoe that was collected from marker number five. Thank you. If you could repackage that partially and then we'll move on to exhibit 238. question that you're, you're changing gloves between each item is that to help prevent contamination yes um, when you're handling items of evidence you should change gloves between touching those items and since I still consider this to be evidence I will continue to do the same
Now you have exhibit 238. What is that item? Yes, state exhibit number 238 is the black and white Nike shoe that was collected from marker number six. Thank you. Now if you could, when you're done, I'll have you look at exhibit 240. Exhibit 240, what is that item? State exhibit number 240 is the canvas painting that was collected from the front passenger seat that had the reddish brown stains at what I call marker 25. If you could repackage that, we'll move on to exhibit 241. What is the item contained in Exhibit 241? State Exhibit number 241 contained the um, black folding knife that was collected from the trunk of the vehicle at marker number 36. Can you see, is there any notation or a partial notation on the blade of the knife, if you can make it out? It's a Wisconsin National Guard. Is on the board. Thank you. Move on to exhibit 242 when you're ready. Mr. Hunt, I, I, it appears you have quite a ways to go. I think when we get done with 242, we're going to take our lunch break. Uh, That's fine, just thank you. Okay, just so you know. That's Exhibit 242. What is that? 
State Exhibit Number 242 contained a serrated knife that was found in the trunk of the vehicle at marker number 37. Thank you. That's all I have on that exhibit, Judge. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I believe that, uh, that your lunch, I don't know if it's actually arrived, but it's supposed to be here at 12. So we're going to take a one-hour lunch break and uh, give you a chance to move around a little bit. So I'll rise. Ms. Hoffmeyer, I just have a few additional questions for you. We left off where you had opened up a number of items of evidence, gone through a bunch of photographs. Uh, once those items are inventoried, photographed, processed at the crime lab, do they eventually go back to the submitting agency? Yes. So in this case, the Dunn County Sheriff's Office? Yes. Um, where are the items stored in between the time that they are processed at the lab until they are taken back, sent back, or uh, given back to the Sheriff's Office? Just to clarify, is that where are they being stored at the lab? Correct. Evidence that's not in the process of being examined and is waiting to be returned to the agency is usually held in the main evidence room at the Wausau lab or if it's at another laboratory within one of their main evidence holding rooms. It, it, is that a secure location? Yes, it is. Who has access at your lab, at the Wausau lab? All uh, lab employees have access to that room. Are there precautions taken, whether it's to prevent weather or temperature or anything else from contaminating or impacting the evidence? The evidence is in the evidence holding room that is a temperature controlled building. <clears throat> I want to take a step back to really the initial crime scene processing. There were some footwear and some footprint impressions in different areas that we've talked about. <coughs> Did you note or were there any footprint or footwear impressions directly in front of uh, the vehicle, the, the car? Not that I observed, no. Anything directly behind the car? There were some impressions um, at the rear of the vehicle. Do you remember if those were footwear or footprint? I don't recall. Okay. Nothing further, thank you. Okay, does that conclude your uh, direct examination? It does. Okay. Uh, we probably could have finished that before lunch then. Uh, Mr. Nelson, go ahead. Thank you.